Hi, Cutting Edge Global family. August is almost here and we have some exciting news to share about an upgraded connection for you, our online community. Cutting Edge Global is upgrading and we are dedicating the entire month of August to do so. We've started renovating in our in-person location, but we have not forgotten about our online family. For the month of August only, we will be shutting down our in-person location and joining our virtual family online. We have a three-step process that we believe will elevate your online experience and engagement with your family here at Cutting Edge Global. This is the way that we plan to upgrade our connection online. Step one, consider. We want to hear from you. If you are a member and have completed your member profile, someone from our care team will email you an email link. If you have not completed your profile, it's okay. You can still complete the survey in our app. This survey is designed for you to consider your online experience with Cutting Edge Global and how we can best improve your connection. Step two, call. When God calls us into a place in Him, He doesn't leave us without a tutor or a governor. We have developed partnering materials to help you grow in the office and calling that you have been called to. Materials such as certificate trainings, manuals, white labeled materials will not only be available for you, but the tribe and territory you are called to. Step three, communicate. Our website and app, newsletters, and even snail mail upgrades will include the following. Devotionals, online Sunday school, mentorship and study communities, podcasts and panel discussions, a book club, a professional alliance, and CETV. We recognize that many of you are waiting for the opportunity to carry out God's vision for your life with dominion and authority. We believe that ultimately this will help increase your supernatural connection with Holy Spirit and the gifts and graces God has given unto each of you. Cutting Edge is about making sure we make an impact in every sphere of influence by His will, His way. We know that the church is not a building, but the governmental assembly of the saints, even online. We will continue our authority series through Sunday service and midweek up Bible study streaming each week online. Trust this process God has given us to encourage yourself to find ways to intentionally connect and engage on purpose with God's people. That's right. Cutting Edge is making room for an upgraded connection. Good morning, Cutting Edge. Hi, I'm Dr. Gaylena, and we are going to come back in just a moment to get into this series on authority. But before we do that, y'all know what it's time for. It is time for you to go tag a neighbor, tell a friend, get everybody in here. No, we are not in person, but we are online. We are upgrading our online connection. We wanna make sure that our Cutting Edge Global Family everywhere experiences not just the love of God through the word of God, but experiences all of Cutting Edge. So yes, this is the season we've taken off so that we can upgrade this experience. So we wanna know right now, get into the chat. Let us know everything that we need to know so we can upgrade our connection with you. Okay. In a minute, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get into this authority series, part four. So stay tuned. Hallelujah. We give glory to Jesus. What's going on, Cutting Edge family? How many of you are ready to worship our Father on today? So wherever you are, whether you're at home or wherever you're viewing this, come on and dance right here. Come on and move. Changes everything. I am free, no fear is holding me. Nothing can stop my praise. Oh, 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 we were made for freedom. Jesus has redeemed us, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. sing it out together. Freedom reigns forever and ever. Let freedom. I'm happy. 
up right now, come on, say, think you have rescued my life. Come on, right here. Come on, say, Lord, you have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. I'm never, never, I'm never, never, I'm never going back. You have rescued my life. Hey. Lord, you have rescued my life. Hey. Yes, you have rescued my life. You did it all, you did it all. You rescued me, you rescued me. Did you have rescued my life? Hey, you have rescued my life. Hey, and I'm never, I'm never, I'm never going back. My response is faith. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, how will you respond? Can we just lift our hands to the King of Kings? Ha! This is my response. This is my response for every way you've made, oh God. It's hallelujah. Listen, I don't know if you felt that like I felt that, but that's probably one of my favorite songs right now because I am honestly dealing with my personal response. And it lines up with the message that we're gonna talk about today. Yes, we are in the authority series and we are talking about receiving the authority from God to do, to be, to grow, to go and all of that. But I'm telling you that your authority is depending upon your response. So what is your response? Well, it is where you have to obey God. So that's what we're going to talk about. That is the title of the sermon for today. It is obey. If you've been checking with us, following with us, because we're an authority series, we've been using them as... Um, uh, we've been using A for Octor, U for Unity, T for Trust, H for Honor. Now we're smack dab in the middle of authority and the word is obey. So let's get into the word of God. If you were with us on Wednesday, uh, I talked about Esther and Mordecai. And I talked about Esther and Mordecai because they are, believe it or not, related to Joseph Yes, they are. They're related to Joseph. Esther and Mordecai are cousins. We know that Esther was also an orphan, which is going to be very important to this, this, this story today. But they're both related to Jacob. As a matter of fact, Jacob and Esau, uh, Mordecai is related to him, but Esther is related to Benjamin. She's out of the line or out of the family of Benjamin. So she's directly related to Rachel and directly related to uh, Joseph, of course, but she's out of the line of Benjamin. I want to take you to the story in Esther, the fourth chapter, because th there is some very serious, um, there's a very serious conversation that happens in Esther, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse. Let's read it together. Here's what it says. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not to thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all of the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. That's over there where the ancient, the, the Chinese and Asian people are, Shushan. And fast ye for me. <laughs> she needed some help. 
and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Okay, let me break this down for you a little bit. First and foremost, Esther and Mordecai, as I stated before, they are related, but they come out of two houses. You can see here where he says, we're going to be okay, but you and your people are not going to be okay. So there's a very, there's a difference between both of them. Uh, and even though they're Jews, there's a difference between their lines. Here is the difference because Benjamin, and we talked about this story before we, we, uh, last week when we talked about David and Jonathan and them having a soul tie and David was asked by King Saul, Jonathan's father, whose child are you? And he says, I'm Jesse's boy. Well, not only did Saul understand, but so did his son, Jonathan, understand that Yebam was being fulfilled because out of the house of Judah came David and out of the house of Benjamin came Saul and Jonathan. And again, Judah was paying Yebam or he was restoring his brother's house by protecting him from Goliath and all of the Philistines. And so in that moment, the Bible says that Jonathan and David's soul came together. They were knit together because he knew that Yebam was being restored. The Bible says that we are to love the Lord with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. But we're also to love our brothers as we love ourselves. I know a lot of times when we talk about soul ties, we think uh, we think ill about soul ties, but this soul was tied because they completed Yebam. Because they completed Yebam and because their souls were tied, there was a manifestation on David's reign as king that brought a unity and an authority to him. Come years later, during the time of Queen uh, Esther, her uh, ancestors again were Benjamin. But Mordecai was not out of the house of Judah. Mordecai was out of the house of Jacob. Jacob and Esau were at odds. And guess who else was connected to this story? Haman. Haman, who wanted to kill the Jews, was out of the house of Esau, Jacob's twin brother. The one that Jacob took his birthright and took his blessing. Well, Haman had hatred for all of the Jews because of what he didn't, because of what happened between those two brothers. Even though those two brothers, Jacob and Esau, were restored, Esau's children, the Amalekites, out of uh, where Haman is from, did, that did not wash well with them, and they still held on to the hatred behind that. And so Mordecai knew, he said, because my family, he came out of the house of Judah, because my family is always doing Yibam, we're going to be good. And somebody else is going to do Yibam for us and protect us. But you, out of the house of Benjamin, Benjamin has not yet completed Yibam. And so this is why he understood that she was not going to be saved. Let me keep reading in Esther, the seventh chapter, the fourth verse, or the uh, one through six. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, what is your petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is your request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For if we are so, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish, but if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue. I wasn't going to say nothing. Although the enemy could not countervail this king, the king's damage. 
Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Queen Esther, unto Esther the queen, Who is he? And where is he that does presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary, the enemy, is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Okay, let me break what's let me break down what's happening in chapter seven now. Verses I read verses one through six. Well, in this moment. She's actually making note that if we were just going to be sold into slavery, then I would have been okay. But we're not just being sold into slavery. Why would she say that? Because she understood what happened to her forefather, Benjamin. Remember Benjamin and Jacob? Because uh, I'm sorry, Benjamin and Joseph. Those were whole brothers. They weren't half brothers. They were the only ones that were the sons of both Rachel and Jacob. They were whole brothers. They were the ones that were, uh, Joseph obviously was sold into slavery and he made it. And Benjamin was the one that was framed to go into slavery and he made it. So she said she knew that if you were just gonna put my people in slavery, you know, the, the, the odds are in our favor because this has happened before and we were gonna be okay. But because that's not what you wanna do and you actually want to kill us, we got a problem and I've got to stand up because this is, this is not even uh, fair for, for my people. And so she then goes before the king. Of course, we know that she fasts and prays first. She gets the word of the Lord. The Lord gives her instructions. She obeys the word of the Lord. And because she obeys the word of the Lord on how she should approach the king, what she is to say. And even after that, what she and Mordecai does in the land, then we see that that obedience brings about an amazing result. Not only is she saved, but her people are saved. She also leads or uh, is queen over 127 provinces. I'm not going to even go into the depth of it, that this is also uh, from the prophecy of her great, 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 great grandmother, Sarah, whose name was changed from Sarai to Sarah, who lived to be 127 years old. She was told by God that she would be the mother of many nations and out of her would come many nations. That didn't happen until Queen Esther now, we know that David restored all of the tribes of Israel, but he did not restore all of the nations. So this word of the Lord did not happen until at least we now know three brothers completed Yebam on top of each other. When they did it in their home, then they were finally trusted to do it for other nations. So this is astounding to see the reverberation of what obedience does not just for you not just for your few but for your future and for the future generations and nations it is important so let's go to this next one all right so what are the benefits of obeying god and this is where i'm going to stay because i want to pound in you the benefits of obeying god because as we recognize and know esther said i need y'all to pray for me matter of fact i need y'all to fast for me because i know what you're saying but i got to get myself together i want to give y'all some stuff that's going to help you get together because i'm sure that god has given you multiple places where he has asked you to be obedient and it's been difficult and it's probably been dif it's probably been difficult because you did not understand the benefits for obeying god all right let's get into the benefits for obeying god the first one we're going to talk about, obedience commits God to set you above all of the nations of the earth. Let me read that for you in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Do you understand now that Queen Esther was set above all the nations of the earth? 
she also implemented the laws of her people in all of the nations of the earth. Why? Because she obeyed. Let's keep going. Obedience qualifies you to now legislate to punish every agent of disobedience. According to 2 Corinthians uh, 10, and I'm going to read verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you understand that your obedience has to be fulfilled before God fights your battles? Woo! I know y'all love to say, shout now, praise him now. God going to fight your battles. Not if you don't obey. Not if you don't obey. He cannot revenge if you don't obey. All right, let me go to the next one. Obedience qualifies you to enjoy kingdom prosperity on the earth. Job 36 and 11, it says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. These are promises from God that are yea and amen. Do you want to spend your years in prosperity? I'm just asking. Let's go. Obedience empowers you to become a lender to nations woo, and not a borrower. Oh, okay. In Deuteronomy 28, 12, uh, and I'm going to read part B now because I'm going to read part A later. It says, and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. These are the promises of God. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you to go to Deuteronomy 28. You're going to read all of the blessings of, of those that are obedient to God. Let's go to the next screen. What are the benefits of God? The, the o obedience enables you to compel every evil thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay. Second Corinthians, y'all know where we're going, where we're going. Second Corinthians 10 and five says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Even Esther, even Esther, even jo uh, Joseph, they had to cast down imaginations. Joseph had to cast down in the imagination that his father didn't love him. He had to cast down the imagination that his brothers didn't want to reconcile with him. We read at the end last week that he went and he finally talked to his brothers. He had to, can, can you imagine years? So many years have passed that they didn't even know who he was when they saw him. He had to cast down those imaginations and bring it into the obedience of Christ. And when he did, and when she did, whoo, God be glorified. The nations were blessed because of her obedience. All right, let's go to the next one. Obedience guarantees happiness and peace. Let me read it to you in Psalms 119 and 165. If y'all know me, y'all know I, I talk this one all the time. It says, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing, mm -mm, not nothing, shall offend him. If you know the law, if you know how this thing is going to work and supposed to work, nothing can, offend. you can't be offended. It doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter how they respond. It doesn't matter how they act. When you know the law of God, his word, his promises are true. There is nothing that they can do or say that is going to trump whatever God has. All right, let's go to the next one. Obedience. I'm at the next slide where it says obedience gives you super victory. Over your enemies. Let's read Deuteronomy 28 and 7. I told you all of the promises are in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read it in your spare time. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee seven ways. I can preach that scripture by itself. But I want you to know when you become obedient, even the sin in your life, even the places that hold you bondage and held you hostage the demonic principalities that tried to hold you on uh, bond in bondage when you obey god they have to flee seven different ways let me move forward obedience to god makes the works of your hand to prosper 
wherever you are. Deuteronomy 28 and 8, here is what it says. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Y'all know how y'all like money in y'all storehouses, food in y'all storehouses, life in your storehouses. Okay. And in all that thou settest thine hands to do, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So nothing should be for naught. I know farmers, I know people that have worked lands with their hands and done things with their hands. And at the end of that, there is still no return. There's still no blessing on it because God's blessing is not a part of that. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to do anything without the blessings of God. Move forward. Yes, Lord. Obedience to God <laughs> brings divine establishment. I want to put a pause right there in, 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 in this scripture. It's uh, the Bible declares in, in Proverbs that um, those of us that are looking for purpose, purpose is established by counsel. Everything that we do, everything that we think, everything, everywhere that we go, we need to be established in it. You have to be, you can have a purpose, but until you are established in your purpose and how are you establishing your purpose by counsel? When you get the counsel and you obey the counsel, it establishes you. Well, the Bible declares when you are obedient, it's going to bring you divine establishment, which means that can nothing and nobody take you out of the territory or the place where God wants to establish you, the realm, the sphere of influence, the work, the whatever. Nobody, nothing can take you out of that because you will be divinely established in that place. I don't care if they got secrets against you. I don't care if they got, you know, listen, blackmailers beware. When God establishes somebody, it is what it is. You can try it if you want to. Listen to me. Uh, in Deuteronomy 28 and 9, it says, The Lord shall establish thee in a, a, thee a holy people unto himself, and he hath he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. Okay, let me keep going. Obedience makes you a terror to your enemies. Woo! Every time I think about that, I think about the scene in Mulan where the little dragon, he gets behind the bright light and, uh, and, and he's magnified to his enemies where they scatter. I'm telling you, God will cause you to look huge. He will cause what you are doing to look insurmountable to your enemies. And they will literally turn on themselves. There are too many places in scripture. King Sennacherib, he turned on himself when he was trying to come after King Jehoshaphat. There are multiple places in scripture where when God establishes you according to his word and according to your obedience, your enemies will be in fear and terror. They will be trembling. Bible declares um, in Deuteronomy 28 and 10, and all of the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. I promise you this. All right, let me read the last one on this page. Obedience brings multiplication and abundance. Oh my goodness. Do y'all hear the things that obedience is going to bring you? Deuteronomy 28 and 11 says, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give you. I'm going to tell you right now, there is land that my father, my mother had, and there was a, a thought, wasn't even a word, it was just a thought that went across where uh, we were thinking about getting rid of it. And the Lord brought me back to scripture and he says, I gave your fathers this land. Do you want to be cut off from a blessing? Oh, okay. No, sir, I don't. Then don't cut off this land because I've got blessings attached to the land that I gave your fathers. Okay. Some of y'all are getting that in a, in a different way. And I'm, I'm going I'm to let that just sit right there. But God is going to cause you to have multiplication and abundance in those places. Okay, let me keep going. 
these are more benefits. There are more than this, but I'm, I'm going to give you these last four and then I'm going to go. Obedience makes you a servant of righteousness. I know that sometimes we feel like, you know, we, we can't possess, we can't have, we can't do, we can't be, you know, we try and we try again. And that's a lot of times because you're doing it out of your own discipline or without any discipline. And the Lord wants you to sit up under his discipline. He wants you to yield to him. Okay, that's a whole nother message that I'm going to do later. But let's read this scripture in uh, Romans, the sixth chapter and the 16th verse. It says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You get to choose where you want to be and who you want to be your master and your Lord. Is it going to be Satan or is it going to be your savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's move. Obedience. Many people can become righteous uh, because of obedience. Many people, not just you, but many people. Look at Romans 5 and 19 and, and how it's set up. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We know we're talking about Jesus Christ. But even as a foreshadow to Jesus Christ, it was Joseph that his obedience, it didn't just bless him. It didn't just bless his family. It didn't just bless Egypt. It blessed all of the nations that were eating from the fertile crescent, all of the nations that were going through the famine because of his obedience. You're going to be a blessing to multiple nations. Believe God. Let me go. Let me keep going. The Bible declares uh, obedience guarantees long life. Ephesians 6, most of the parents know this one, 1 through 3. I'm going to read that. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Those are the two biggest things we want. We want to live a well life. We want things to be well with us, and we want to live a long life. Well, if you obey if you practice obedience, you're going to have a good life and a long life. All right. And then last but not least, Revelations 22 and 12 guarantees heaven at last. It says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What is the work? The work that I've given you, that God has given you, that you've become obedient to. These are the things, yes, that give you the blessed assurance that you are going to see heaven at last, that you are going to be with him when he cracks the sky. Now, I'm telling you, this is just the beginning of the blessings of God that are yea and amen. But I'm telling you specifically, those of you that want to walk in dominion, you want to walk in authority, you see now, according to scripture, that all of those things that cause you to walk in authority, to have dominion, are attached to your obedience. So I want to pray with you. I want to pray. Sometimes arrogance gets us out of being obedient. Ego gets us out from out of being obedient. Ignorance gets us from, from out of being obedient. Um, being timid causes us to not obey. Being insecure causes us to not obey. Being uncertain or unsure of where we're going to end up causes us to not obey. Uh, being, uh, being afraid, being fearful causes us to not obey. All of these things, any of those areas that you are dealing with right now, I want to pray with you and for you. And I'm telling you that just what Esther did, she had to weaken her flesh. She said, I've got to fast and pray. And I'm going to need y'all to fast and pray with me. Because when she was weak in her flesh, that was when she heard God. Maybe you're saying, I can't hear God. I don't know what God is saying to me. I, I don't remember the last time I've heard God. I'm telling you, 
right now. It's probably because your flesh is taking over, because your your flesh is rising up. So this is why even uh, some most of us here at Cutting Edge Global, our intercessors, our prayer warriors, are fasting and praying even now because we want to weaken our flesh. We don't want to miss the move of God. We don't want to miss having dominion and authority in him because we need to hear God's voice so that we can obey him. I want to pray with you. And then lastly, those of you that don't know Jesus Christ at all, you don't have a commitment. You don't have a connection. You don't have a master, or at least you think you don't have a master. You don't think you're serving anybody else's agenda and you haven't heard God's agenda for your life. You don't know the plan and the purpose. I want to pray for you right now. Those three categories. If that is you put it, it's me. I need prayer so I can walk in authority. I need the anointing to obey. I need to trust and obey any of those things. Put that in the comment box below because I am about to pray with you and for you. As a matter of fact, I'm about to pray and fast and I would admonish you to pray and fast for yourself with me so that we can get into this place of obedience so that we can get into the space of authority. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am praying for your sons and your daughters on behalf of this word, of the promises that are yea and amen. We didn't know all of these things were attached. All of these doors opening were attached to us being obedient. We didn't know. We didn't even hear some of us what we were supposed to be obedient to. As a matter of fact, the last thing you said we didn't do and we haven't heard anything else from you. It's probably because you want us to go back to that last thing and obey you. God, I pray that your sons and your daughters will hear you. You said that if my if I my sheep hear my voice, another, they will not go to it. They will not hear anybody else. They will come to me. I pray in the name of Jesus that your sons and your daughters today will hear your voice. Some of us have gone astray. Some of us are even listening and looking for other voices to adhere to or to listen to or to find wisdom and knowledge from or find a purpose and a plan from but God it is your voice I pray in the name of Jesus that your voice will ring so loud and be so clear and God the promises that are evident will be so uh, 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 in front of us that we would not go to the right nor to the left but we would hear and heed your voice I pray for a spirit of obedience to fall upon your people for you said that in this place you would cause, you would command a blessing upon us. Many of us, oh God, we've been prophesied the blessing. We have seen the blessing happen for other people. We have heard of the blessings of God that are yea and amen, but we have not experienced them for ourselves. And it is because we have not been obedient. So God, I pray that the spirit of truth will align us to the perfect plan that we would be aligned to the obedience that you are commanding for our life. I'm, I'm serious about that. I pray this. I feel this thing right here and right now. God, make your voice clear. We're open. Show us, share with us where we have been disobedient and we will repent. We will turn from that. We will do what is necessary. We will complete Yibam. Sometimes, God, these things are beyond us. We weren't even there when it happened. It happened centuries ago, ages ago. But you've called us into this place to hear and heed your voice. To stand up. And to stand out. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will trust you and obey. In Jesus' name, we pray. For it is so, and so it is. Amen and amen. <laughs> well, you have prayed a prayer in faith. Now, I'm going to see. I want to know if you will trust him and obey. 
Many of you already have testimonies that this series on authority has changed your life. I need you to connect with us, upgrade your connection with us. Share your testimonies right now. Share your testimonies. Let us know what, what God is doing. And I'm gonna share some testimonies with you because God is opening up doors. He's giving us land. He's giving us promises. He's giving us our spheres of influence. And by his command, he is commanding the blessing on us. So that blessing that you thought that you lost, that blessing that you thought that you sold, that somebody else got, maybe you were the Esau and you thought somebody else got that blessing. God is here through your obedience to command a blessing on your life. I decree it in Jesus name. All right. We will be back on Wednesday to dig a little deeper and to go into his word, to make sure that you know um, all of the blessings attached to obedience. So get back here on Wednesday. I can't wait to share the rest of this word with you. But until then, stay in a place in the presence of God so that you can hear his voice. Write it down. This is the time of the season to do so. All right, I love you to life, and I'll see you soon. You have just been a part of our encounter. This is where we worship, and I'm sure that you are probably just as full as I am, and you're probably ready to make some decisions, not about me and maybe not even about cutting edge, but about your relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to make sure that you get an opportunity to do that, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you've never done that before, it's a simple prayer. It's as simple as believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and receiving him into your heart so that he can direct your life. So pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you for dying on the cross. And I thank you for raising from the dead so that I could be saved. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I told you, it's just as simple as that. We're going to start the process so that the Lord Jesus can literally walk with you and that he can begin to feed you. We're here on Wednesdays at 6 in the morning, Central Standard Time, as well as 6.30 p.m., Wednesday night Central Standard Time and we are going through and walking through the word of the Lord. We are also here as an online church and an in-person church right here in the city of Chicago or the Chicagoland area. We want to invite you to be a part of Cutting Edge Global Family. You've done the first thing. You've encountered us. Now you can download our app and on our app, there is a connect card just for you, where if you share a little bit of your information, we'll be able to share with you the next steps so that you can increase in your relationship with Jesus Christ, with the help of all of us here at Cutting Edge. I'm here, the lead pastor, Dr. Galena, but we have plenty of pillars and pastors that are waiting to help you along in this journey. You are not by yourself. The Holy Spirit is already causing you to hear and heal. And I want you to know that God is on your side. You are an overcomer, whether you know it or not, by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony. Can I just pray a closing prayer with you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all those that heard. But you said to not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer also. I pray, God, that you will strengthen their heart to do the thing that they found in their heart, not in condemnation, but in conviction of their soul. Maybe they have been out of fellowship with you or out of fellowship with the body of Christ, and this is an awesome opportunity for them to get connected again. I pray, Father, even as they go through the, the Connect card, that they will connect to the spirit of truth, that they will connect to the spirit of love, that they will connect to you and God be empowered to move according to your plan and your way for you said I know the thoughts that I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil to give them an expected end and we thank God that they are overcomers and we thank God that this is the way 
that they will get into a closer relationship with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, for it is so, and so it is. Amen.